It's Irene from Thames Art Gallery and you are watching this video as part of our Make Art Together series at Home with Tag and CK Libraries. I'm here this week to get you started on a week-long adventure with watercolors. In your art kit, you're going to find a flower palette, a couple of brushes, a larger flat and a small rounder one, um, a crayon or a piece of wax candle, and some special thirsty paper. Now a lot of times you'll hear us use the expression with watercolors, we're going to let the water do the work. And that is our goal this week. Watercolor has, um, you know, very special effects that uh, behind me is acrylic painting, for example, and it has a very different appeal to it. So the other things you're going to need from around the house, you're going to need a small bowl of water which might have to be changed regularly because you don't want to end up looking like the Sidden Ham or the Thames River really muddy or it also makes your colors really muddy. Uh, also you will need uh, a pencil, salt, and some tissue or toilet paper. Now, really quickly the first thing I want to tell you a little bit about is our paint that's in the palette. So this paint, its first life was lived in some small tubes and we squeezed the paint from the tubes and let them dry out. And so now they're kind of like watercolor cakes. But when we, we'll talk about reactivating them with water and uh, the beauty of this is it's highly portable and, and, and completely reusable. It doesn't dry out like acrylic or oil. Um, it's just, it's good to go the minute that you add water to it. Um, so if you wanted to go outside this week at all and take your little palette with you and have a little outdoor adventure, that would be perfect. Now you'll also notice, you'll say, well, you know, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven colors on there, but they're not that interesting. And these are the primary colors. And from these basic colors, for us, we're a little different from the store. If you go to the store, you might be dazzled by all the different colors that are available. And these not so much, right? but we will learn this week that the magic is in the mixing. Being able to mix the paints, the primary colors, you can uh, make a full range of colors. You really don't need any more colors from this. And this is where the magic happens right here in our mixing well. So without further ado, let's try. Hi, so for this exercise, you're going to need a brush, a small bowl of water, Kleenex or toilet paper. And from your kit, you're going to find one of two color mixing pages. We're going to start with the one that looks like two pizzas. So on your sheet, you'll see that the primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. Our palette is a little bit more sophisticated. We have the warm and the cool colors of each of the primary colors. For example, I have a cool lemon yellow and I have a sunny warm yellow. This is gonna give us more color variety and we will experiment with the colors we can make on our coloring, color mixing challenge page. So, to get started, I'm going to take my brush and swim it around in the water bowl. And what I'm gonna do is drop a little bit of water on top of each of my colors. It doesn't matter which, I'm just adding a little bit of clear water to each of the colors. And this reactivates uh, our paint. If you remember in the first part of the, of the uh, video, I said that our colors started out as uh, liquid in small tubes, and then we let them dry into little cakes. So we're really just activating again with the water. Also with watercolors, we like to start with the lightest color first. So what I'm gonna do here is just maybe take the lemon yellow and you'll see that now I have, one more time I have this nice liquid right here. If I was mixing, I would drop this and put this into the center. So I'm just gonna take my brush and I'm gonna fill in the yellow pie. My, I have decided to use the flat brush, which is the one that's a little bit bigger and has kind of a rectangle shape on the top. 
And while I do this, you know, I figure I will stay in the lines and that really just gives me an excuse to practice um, how to move the brush. I can use the brush on its edge and get a really, really fine point or I can actually use the flatness of the brush to get a nice broad stroke. There we are. So there's my yellow. I'm going to swim my brush back in the water bowl again. And this time I think I'm going to go in with the reds. So just choose one of the reds that you like. And one more time. Once you have that activated, and they have a little bit of liquid sitting in that well. I'm just going to come back to the pie and then turn the page, whatever makes me feel comfortable. I'm going to take my brush up on the edge to get right up into that corner. And I think I'm just going to use my brush on the edge and come right down that line. Just like I had a fine tipped pen. I think I'm going to keep my brush on the edge and come right down this other line like that. And lift up. Sometimes it seems like it's a little bit more like calligraphy. Same thing again. I'm just going to come around. You might want to do this differently. But I like to practice my brush strokes because I think that brush strokes can be important and brush strokes can add variety to paintings. And then I'm going to use the flat part of my brush and I'm just going to fill that in. Just like that. And I have used the warm red color, which is giving me almost like a pink result. So back to the water bowl, I'm going to swim my brush again. I'm going to turn my page again to something that's comfortable and left-handed. I like to have some space over here. I'm going to go in with a blue. So I tip my palette up again. And this blue looks quite dark, but now that I've added the water to it, I've actually got a nice uh, cerulean blue color, kind of a sky blue color. I'm going to take that again. Again, I'm going to use my brush, my flat brush, not on the flat part, but on the edge. And that gives me a, a, the ability to make a fine line. I can stay in the lines. I'm going to lift up when I get to the edge. I'm going to come down like that, just turning my page to whatever feels comfortable. I'm going to come down all the way on the edge, all the way around here. And lift up. For the center again, I'm going to go back into my well and I'm going to get more of this liquidy blue paint. And I've turned my brush on the flat part. So I've got nice broad strokes like a thick marker. And I can cover that area quickly, but my edges are all nice and neat and tidy. Here we go. I'm going to come down on the edge one more time. And there we have the primary colors, the yellow, the red, and the blue. Now for the bottom pizza, it asks us to mix our primary colors. And when we mix our primary colors, the result is a broader rainbow range of secondary colors and primary colors. Again, I'm going to start with the yellow. I'm going to start with the lightest color. So I'm going to bring my yellow from the well, take my brush up on its edge again, and color in this smaller piece of pizza. If I was a pizza, what flavor would I be if I was yellow? I don't know. So there we are. We've got the yellow like that. Now it says the yellow plus the red is going to give me the secondary color, which is the orange. And this is where the magic happens when you're working with colors. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my yellow and I'm going to bring it into the center of the well. Now with the lightest color, you're always going to need more light color and very little of the darker color. So my red is also activated. I'm going to choose, I'm going to just pick up the smallest amount of red and mix it with my yellow. If the color is too light, I can add more 
but I'm pretty happy with it. So I've got a little puddle. I don't have much of uh, an area to cover, so maybe I have enough. And again, I've got my brush up on the edge, and you can see that my color is not red or yellow, but it is now orange. So come along the edge again, like a fine line marker, back to the well in the middle, and I have my orange slice of pizza. Maybe I'm making a fruit pizza. So there we are, I have my orange slice. Now what I'm going to do actually, I'm just going to take the Kleenex and clean out the center of the well. Just like that. And I'm going to complete the project by going in and taking the red and using my brush on its edge again so I can complete the lines and stay in the lines. I'm going to take it right down like that. A lot of brush work and things like that is just practice. And like I said, your brush marks can be very expressive. You can see this crazy painting behind me. So there we are. So we have, our, we've taken our yellow and our red and we mix them together and we got orange. We use more yellow and just a little bit of red to get this orange color right here. So I'm going to swim my, bus, my brush back in the water jar again. Now the next one says red and blue equals purple. So what I'm going to do here, I've mixed my red. I'm going to bring my red into the mixing bowl right here into the mixing well. I'm going to choose the dark blue because actually I know from experience when I look at these blues that this dark blue is going to make the nicer purple. First of all I'm going to paint this blue in the triangle. Again my brush is up on the edge I'm going to move my paper to whatever is comfortable for me. I'm going to take my brush and use it. I'll take advantage of this flat line shape that it is. Coming along. Coloring and then take a little more paint and I'm using the flat part of my brush to fill in that space. I think I have a little hair on my brush. I'm just going to pull that out. So I have this nice dark blue color now. When did you move? Okay, so now I have the red in the center of the mixing well. And I'm adding the blue to it and I have this nice violet color. So what I'm going to do is come in, in between the red and the blue because those are the colors that I mixed together. I'm going to come along the edge, come along the edge again, and use the flat part of the brush. And there we are. So now I have the red and the blue equals this nice purple color. I have one more to go. I'm going to clean up the center of the well again. Here we go, so we're, I'll have a nice clean start again. Now we have to get to the green. So I can tell by this little pie chart that the blue and the yellow together are going to make the green. So I'm going to start with the lightest color and I'm going to pull the yellow into the center of the mixing well. And like I said to you before, you're going to need more of your lighter color. So I'm going to need more of the yellow and just a little bit of the blue. Now, to me, it doesn't really matter which blue I use, so maybe I'm going to go with the light cerulean blue again, see if I can get a nice bright green color. And there you have it. You have this nice bright color like that. It kind of is a bit of a wow sometimes when you can mix these colors together. Brush on the edge. I'm just going to move my paper. 
There we are. And then on the, with the flat part of my brush, I'm just going to fill that in. And there, so we we did two still two things. We picked up some brush skills, and then we know how to make a rainbow of colors from our primary colors. So I will be back in a minute with a color mixing challenge. Okay, this exercise is a real scale builder. In the olden days, artists used to take their watercolor kits with them out of doors and make small studies of nature. They would bring back into their studio and from these small documents of the colors and the shapes of the landscape, they would make bigger paintings from them. Working out of doors with your palette and paper is a great way to really understand and study the nature around you. And if you know how to mix your colors, you can really create accurate pictures of what your world looks like. So let's start. Here's our color mixing challenge page. The first thing we have to know when we look at our palette is which of our colors are warm and which of our colors are cool. We already talked about the yellow. We decided that the lemon yellow was the cool and the orangey yellow, the sunshine yellow is the warm one. With the reds, you're gonna have one red that looks more like fire truck red and, the, and another red that looks like it could be a fruit jam or something you know sweet that you could eat. So the one that looks like the jam, the strawberry jam color is going to be the warmer color. Now with blue, blue can be really tricky because blue typically is a cool color. But within the blues, we have a warm and we have a blue. And this instance here is the dark blue that is actually the warm blue and the other lighter blue that is the cool blue. So on your sheet, you are going to notice the first challenge is cool yellow and warm blue. So the first thing we're going to do is find the cool yellow. So that's the lemon yellow. And we're going to pop that into the middle of the mixing well. It's activated like that because it has a little bit of water in it. I'm going to clean my brush and I'm going to go in for the dark blue, just a little bit of the dark blue because it's the dark color, it's a strong color, just a little bit of that dark blue and I'm going, I've got this nice tealy green almost and I'm going to pop that into the square right here. So then again, however you want to do this, I like to use, I like to take advantage of this brush and its square shape and I can create a nice definitive line along the edges just like that and then when it comes to the center I'm going to use the flat part of the brush and color that in. And if I was outside this looks like uh, the color of shaded grass you know maybe the color under the tree that the sun can't get to. It's a really kind of complex and nice green color so I'm going to change my Clean my brush again, I'm going to change the water, to clean out the mixing well. So the next one says cool yellow and cool blue. So I'll go back for the cool yellow, mixing that up. I'm going to bring it into the center of the mixing wheel. And my cool blue, we determined that the light blue is going to be the cool blue. So I'm washing my brush again and I'm going in to take a small amount of this ultramarine blue. And that gives me that nice bright green that we made before on our color wheels. So, oh, I got a little bit extra blue there. So I'm going to again use the shape of my brush to help me fill in the square. Here we go. So already we've got two different greens color as you'll see that then that dries a little bit better. Okay so I'm going to take my Kleenex again and I'm going to clean up the center of the mixing well. Now this time it says warm yellow and warm blue. So we haven't used our warm yellow yet and it's a much more intense color. So I have a very strong yellow here in my palette. I would say almost a full-on orange and the warm blue we determined was the dark blue. So I'm going to pick up some of that dark blue and I'm going to bring it to the center of the mixing well. And this gives me almost like a camouflage color. So it's very different again. 
And how useful is this if you were actually going outside to paint or you are going to make a nice landscape painting. Already from two colors, yellow and blue, you know, we have some very interesting complex greens. Here we have that. So moving on, I'm gonna clean this out again. My next question says warm yellow and cool blue. So back in with the warm yellow into the center of the mixing wheel. Cool blue, we said okay. That is the light blue, a little bit of that light blue. <clears throat> and there we have it. Again, we have a different kind of a blue color. Uh, sorry, a green color. Maybe perhaps the time we're finished, we could make color chips for the, a paint factory. So I can see that this blue has a, like a nice transparency to it. This one, this one is what I would call opaque. So it seems to be more chalky. It's, um, you know, as opposed to this one and this one looks more like, uh, like a stained glass window like colors that you can see through. Where these two seem a little bit more uh, like they have, almost like we added white except we didn't. So well, this is kind of an interesting little challenge. The next one says cool yellow and warm red. So I'm going to clean up the center of the mixing well again. And I'm going to go back to my lemon yellow, my cool yellow. I'm going to pull that back into the center of the mixing palette. And warm red. So I'm going to look for the one that has the most raspberry kind of look to it. So this is making, it's almost an orange. It's a very different color. It's almost a salmon. And again, I'm going to just box that in using the shape of my brush. There are some people who really, really love color and they really do, they make color chips and they save them and they put them on key rings and they make notes about them in case they ever need to make them again. But you can understand that artists would like color. My Kleenex seems to be on its last legs. I'm gonna take a new piece. So I'm gonna clean that out. And my next one says cool yellow and cool red. Let's see if I have a lot of variation. So my cool yellow, so I'm gonna pull that out. My, uh, my water is also getting a little bit muddy here too, which can affect the colors that you make. So really I should be changing my water. So my cool yellow, cleaning my brush in my muddy water now, and a cool red. So I need to find the red that looks, I can't determine, <laughs> a little bit more like a fire truck. So this is quite similar. And I'm not getting a great variation from my reds, but it might just be the combination of reds that I have here. Again, I'm getting a much more transparent color. Perhaps if I was doing a portrait of someone, this could be a nice color to incorporate. Another thing that works is you'll notice um, we can layer over these watercolors and the more you layer it, the way you, you can also change the lightness and the darkness of the color. If I was to add like lots and lots of water, because we don't have white, so if I was to add a lot of water, our colors would get lighter and lighter. Just like I said, if we were to let this dry and go back in again, we can kind of ombre the color that we have and we can work that into a darker and a deeper color just by adding. So I hope you have fun and enjoy the color mixing challenge. Maybe you'll get really, really into it. Okay, so I finished my color mixing challenge page and then 
Mine may look a little different from yours because I went back and did the individual challenges one more time. And then I layered the color that I got over the top of my base layer, which gives me, you know, twice as many colors. And some artists really like to play with colors and they might go in a third time and make another little slice down the side here. And you can see how even individually these colors start to kind of sing with one another. Some artists are not so interested in making uh, representational work or making anything, copying anything from nature, but they really just like playing with the colors by themselves. So that aside, I'm going to use this as a reference. And what we're going to do is sort of look at how to make a little landscape painting. And I'm going to use the Kleenex up in here to show you how to make this little cloud technique, okay? So the first thing we're going to do this time, we're taking our little squares of postcard paper. Now this paper is different from the color mixing paper. This is watercolor paper, it's 140 pound paper. I might be hot pressed. What that means is it's like a really thirsty beach towel. You know, no matter how much water you put on here, the paper is not going to disintegrate or break or tear or anything like that. So like I said, with the layering, you can really add a lot of layers to this piece of paper and it's gonna hold up. So I'm putting it down here in front of me and I've got a pencil. And the first thing I'm gonna do is draw in a horizon line. Now you may have heard the term horizon line. The horizon line is usually where the sky meets the land. In Kent County where we live, we live in, I would say, big sky country. We have a very flat landscape and a big sky. So I'm going to drop my horizon line down near the bottom of the page. So my picture has two thirds sky and one third land. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend that I'm making a windy, stormy sky. So I'm gonna take my pencil and create a few directional lines off in a diagonal, because a diagonal line is always a very dynamic line. And there we are. The next thing that I'm going to do, by the way, I changed my water and I now have nice clean water because my water is getting very dirty after doing all of this. So I've got clear water in my bowl, my brush is clean, and I'm going to put this clean water and I'm going to paint just a little bit past this little horizon line that I put. Now my pencil lines are very light and that might be why you can't see it through the screen. And they are light for a reason because we're not making a pencil drawing, we're making a watercolor. A lot of times it's very hard to erase pencil marks on the watercolor too, watercolor paper. So my paper is now soaking wet all the way across the top and just below my horizon line. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm gonna start with this warm yellow color. I'm gonna put it just above the horizon. So I'm going to go in and put that into my mixing well and we're just going to draw a line right across the bottom. And you'll see that the water makes the, paint, makes the paint move. You can create little blooms by kind of dotting your paper around like that, dotting your paint. But basically, the paint is on the move. And this is the really wonderful thing about watercolor painting. It's really the only kind of painting you know, where you're using stains and thin paints and you really want to take advantage of the fact that the water does the work and the water will move the paint around in any direction that you want. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go in for this warm dark blue that we looked at earlier. I'm going to bring it into, another, into the mixing well too and leave it a little bit separate from the yellow. That's a very straightforward blue, which I, I might wanna change looking at this. Like I really like the warm blue with the warm red gives it that purpley color. So 
I'm a little tempted, I think, to add, clean my brush. I'm going to drop in a little bit of that warm red and change the color on that a little bit. And then I'm going to drag that across the top of my page. And it's going to kind of mix with the yellow too. I'm going to make these little blooms like I talked about before, kind of dotting that around. I think I need a little more. Down like that. Now not to forget about these little directional lines that I made, these little diagonal lines. I'm going to bring this blue and mix it, let it mix together with that yellow a little bit. I'm going to pick my paper up and just let that move around a little bit. I really like how this line of um, stronger colored paint is collecting there. It's like a line I, you know, it's just a very attractive line. What I might do now is just take my clear water and just help this blue, the purpley blue that I have and the yellow kind of blend together. And the blue and the yellow create a very neutral or a brown color, which should help our landscape look like it has some distance, some perspective. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some Kleenex. I'm going to scrunch it in a little ball. And this is going to work like an eraser. But depending on the shape that I make, it's going to look like clouds. So this is going to pop out some of the color that I've added here. And hopefully we can get something that's kind of interesting. And I'm keeping in mind this sort of directional line that I had here. Some people are cloud experts. We have someone in the art gallery right now, one of our exhibiting one of our exhibitors, photographer Scott Taylor, and he used to be a cartographer or a map maker. And I bet you he knows all about the clouds, whether these are cumulonimbus or whatever they are. Okay, so I might just bring the white to my clouds just down a little bit onto the horizon like that. There we go. And really, it's as you like it. There's no right or wrong, but you can try it. You can start to make this. If you see anything that's getting too dark in a place where you don't want it, like I said, you can use your Kleenex like an eraser. Now, really what should happen is this should dry, and then I'm going to come back in and add in some of the other features in the middle ground and in the foreground. Okay, so believe it or not, this is the same picture that I was working on when I left you. So the colors really changed a lot. I decided I would go online and I'd have a little Google about to look at real clouds. But I think what would be most wonderful is just to go outside and take little pieces of paper and put them on a clipboard or something and just go out and look at the shapes of the clouds and take the little piece of Kleenex and pull out the clouds and look for the directions and the movements that the clouds are making. That's what I would recommend. And the weather's getting pretty nice too. So in order to finish this, so I have very little left of the yellow. The yellow has now sort of become this muddier color down in with this greeny blue. This is the color that the yellow and the blue are starting to make. And I'm just going to keep on emphasizing that before I do that. I also feel like I have this central sort of focal point happening here. And so if you've heard of one point perspective, I feel like I've got a line of perspective starting to happen here. My clouds are sort of going out at like a high thigh, like a five finger kind of spread. So I'm going to work with that. And I'm going to take my pencil and create a little road or a pathway. I could pretend that I'm down one of the 
side roads in Kent County or something and I'm putting in a directional line right there. So this kind of becomes my focal point. I'm going to continue, I think, darkening my around my horizon. And in order to dark, you'll also notice that we don't have any browns. So in order to make browns, really brown is all the colors. So I'm going to pull this blue in here. I'm going to clean my brush and I'm going to pull in the red. And I mix it together and I'm going to get a purple. And what a color um, combination that we haven't talked about today uh, are complementary colors. So the purple and the yellow are opposite or complementary on our color wheel. And if I mix the yellow and the purple, I'm immediately going to get a dull color. It's a little bit lighter than I want. It's a, it's a nice tanny brown color, but I would like something a little bit darker. So I'm going to go in for my navy blue again, and I'm going to pull it down. And this is just really color mixing until you get the color that you want. And like I said, if you're trying to make a dark neutral color, it really is a combination of all the colors on our palette. So the red warms it up a little bit and the blue darkens it down. Now that's not bad. I'm just going to give it a little final. It's going up the blue a little bit more. And just bring this along and paint this in along my horizon. And if I pick up my paper, the pigment will collect down along that line again. The next thing I think I'm going to do is I'm going to emphasize this line that I made with my pencil. You'll notice too that I'm using the really fine tip brush, which is kind of a perfect size for these little postcards. So at this point, I could either pretend that I have more, um, like the example picture. We have some, I'm not sure if you can see it, there's lines, directional lines leading you there like it's a plowed field. So I can either continue that, you know, or not. So now I have a real nice shadow color. I'm going to go back to my color chart that I made before and I'm just going to look at these various greens that was made and decide, I think this one here, for the darkness of the sky, this is way too bright. I really like this green and I also like this green here. Maybe in the foreground, I would like to make this one. So I'm going to wipe up my palette and my color map tells me that this was made with the warm yellow and the cool blue. So I'm going to put the warm yellow in the middle of the well and I'm going to add a little bit of the blue and that's the cool blue. It's quite a refreshing green color and I'm just going to add this across here. Another thing I like about watercolors is that when you layer the colors just like this, sometimes the Separation is really clear, and that can be interesting. I've got my layer of yellow underneath here, and it, it remains, if you could see this person, this in person, you can see that that yellow is not moving. Now it's dry, it's staying in place, and my green is layering nicely over the top. So it looks like maybe the clouds are creating a shadow line across that, I might want to play with that a little bit. So I can either wait and add another layer and darken that down, or I might want to go into this, which is the warm yellow and the warm blue. So I'm just going to add a little bit of this other blue into here. And this is going to give me a nice sort of shadowy, shadowy look. And I'm just going to emphasize my road, which runs down the center. And maybe come across that path a little bit. I might pull that out with my Kleenex in a minute, so I just get a little bit of a shadow. And bring that forward like that. 
So from here on out, it really is about, because I'm not copying from anything really in real life, I'm using my imagination a little bit. But I said, you know, if you could go outside, I would really recommend that. Take a short drive, pull over to the side of a road, take your little sketch pad out, take your little watercolor palette out, and that would be kind of a fun activity to do. Now I could make this brown color of the road as a final thing. Gonna wipe out the palette again. So I'm going to try and make that complementary color one more time. So I'm going to pull in my pinky red. I'm washing my brush. I'm going to pull in a little bit of the blue. And I'm making that nice purple color. Cleaning my brush. I'm going to go in for the warm yellow. And I have this nice kind of tan color. And I'm just going to take my brush and just create a pathway. Just like that. I'm going to move my paper. I might pull out a little bit right there with the paper towel. You know, and there we go. You start to develop this nice little landscape. I've got a little bit of something called bleeding. So I'm just going to sort of let that move away over to the edge and have it come down like that. And I could let this dry and I could add more details. I could add some, I could take a dry brush at the very end and I could add in some grasses along the edge of the path. I could put in a little building and I really develop this. So you really get a lot of longevity out of your paper too if you just take your time and add your layers and um, you know, have fun. So in your kit, you would also find a piece of candle wax or an oil crayon or a white crayon. And the reason for that is you'll notice that we don't have any white paint when we have watercolors. So if you were going to create if, uh, the white of the sparkle in someone's eye or the white of a tooth, or perhaps you were going to make a little snowdrop and you wanted to create the little white flower on top, what you have to do is protect your paper. So the wax is a resist and wherever we put the wax, the paint will not travel to. So what I have here, I'm going to create a design, just a simple design with the candle and then show you how this works. So I'm pressing fairly firmly to make sure that the, the wax is actually covering the paper. And there we go. I've got some extra little chunky parts that I'm just going to uh, cover up. And it's like a secret message. I know you can't see it. The next thing, I change my water again so I have some nice, fresh, clean water. And what I'm going to do is take my flat brush and I am going to paint with the clear water over my page. So this takes a minute. And we talked about this special paper before, so I can definitely... Uh, handle all of the water that I'm putting on here. A little bit of the water will soak in, but most of it sits right on top. And you can use the candle to make abstract designs, or like I said, you can use it for adding a highlight or uh, in place of white paint. There you go, my page is covered. I'm going to make sure that it's out to the edges. It does seem to be thirsty. <clears throat> and I'm going to go into my palette and I think I'm going to choose 
the warm red. Maybe I'll just put it a little bit into the center of the mixing well. And now I'm just going to put some blooms onto my page. I'm going to let the water do the work. The water and the wax candle will do the work. It's always kind of magical when the paint starts to flow around like that. So you can start to see my shape appearing. Here we are. Now all this time I've kept my color map that uh, we made earlier with me. Just as a little reminder if I want to, you know, vary the colors from my palette. For example, I think I'm going to add a little of this warm yellow and I'm going to bring it into the mixing well too and just let it have its own little spot. <laughs> and I'm just going to go over the top where I have this warm red color because you kind of a rainbowy ombre effect. And I might go up here and I might pull in the blue along with the red to see what kind of effect I get there. So I'm going to go in with this deep blue we talked about how it made a nice purple. I'm going to mix it with my warm red and maybe I'll come in up here. And like magic, you know, wherever you have that candle wax, your page does not um, accept the paint. The paint will not go there. So you can see where you can really create some nice designs using this technique. I might add just a little bit more red up here in the top. I kind of like it when it spills around and flows down. Maybe a little bit darker in here. And sometimes you can brush it on and sometimes you've heard me talk about little blooms. You can just let it dot, dot on and the water will uh, bring it around. Again, you can kind of move your paper and watch the paint spill and move around till you get a design that you like. I could go right to the edges. I did a practice one before and it has a little bit of a purple background. I don't think I like the white background. And one more thing that we sometimes use too is a little bit of salt. And salt just gives it an extra texture. So I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit on here. You know, it almost looks like glitter. And what you can see, just kind of makes it, gives it almost a little sparkle. On these other smaller pages, I was kind of playing around with the candle as well and another example here and here I was just mixing color mixing and adding some salt and I and then this one here I was using a just I colored in the box with the plain water and filled the top of the box with the paint and just let it ombre and added more and more water so it got lighter and lighter and that was kind of a fun thing to do too so enjoy and make some cool designs with your candle and soak your paper with clear water, maybe add a little salt, and let the water do the work. <laughs>